make them the carries that they have been so many times before for Fnatic. And now as we enter picks and bans, a lot of questions in the mind as we look at what both teams are going to go for. Will Nemesis end up on Galio again? And more importantly, will Abadage secure that Lissandra? Only pick he's played so far has looked incredible on it, even if he has been a bit of an unsung hero here and there. So we're seeing some pretty conventional bans so far. Ezreal still being left open, but more importantly, Akali, Aurelia, Aatrox, Urgot, all left unbanned right now, which means that there's going to be a lot of flex picks available. Will we see Abadage not on his Lissandra this time around? Interesting strategy for Fnatic, and I kind of like that both teams are, are shying away from banning a lot of these, you know, S-tier picks, at least in terms of solo lane roles. Now, Urgot taken off the board does mean that the Aatrox is up and available, and it feels like this is pretty much the call-out. They say, Shalka, we know you want that Lissandra. Are you willing to give up Aatrox to get it? And the hesitation there on the Shalka side as they debate this first pick. I mean, there's a lot to discuss, right? Because I think it, Akali is a very strong pick still. Nemesis and Whippo should both be able to play it. I feel like Nemesis last week when he got his hands on the Akali looked very good. Um, but also Aurelia. Aurelia, I feel like in team fights can offer a huge amount and is very flexible as well. So. By taking the Aatrox, you kind of guarantee two strong picks and all. You know, because we're so used to seeing her back. She's permabanned. You just yeah. forget she exists. You forget that she exists, and now Cassio's been left available. Now, I don't think Reckless can play it. I'm going to make that gamble and say that it's not going to go in the bot lane, and instead it's going to be put in the mid lane for Nemesis. That is my assumption right now. That is an incredibly powerful pick if it does end up in his hands, but they have not opted to take the Lissandra here, which means that Shalkar are going to get both the Aatrox and the Liss if they want it. Braum being the priority pick, I think an interesting choice coming in from Fnatic. So many flex picks left up and available. Makes you wonder why they went for the Braum here. I think they just wanted to guarantee a strong support down towards the bot side of the map. Immediately, Memento going to grab himself a jungle pick. It means that things like Tom Kench, in theory, should raise in value for Ignar. He may also choose to go for the Thresh as well. Bit of a cheeky hover there from Shalka. I'd be very surprised if we saw Aniko, especially Don't this play with my heart, Shalka. Draft. I feel you, audience. I feel you. I want it to. Nine seconds. Don't get baited in. I'm baited. Probably I'm, I'm gonna fully be... committed. Betty is five. It's gonna be a support. Three. D oh, oh. Oh. There it is. The thrash locked in for Ignar. Much more of what we expected. Abadagi playing with our hearts. He did a good job, though. He waited, he swapped three times, and then he locked in. Thresh, though, I like to pick up for Ignar. One of these supports that can be such a huge playmaker fits very well into Ignar's strategy. We'll see how he fares in the Braum matchup. The question now, what are Fnatic going to round out this first pick phase with? Do they match the jungler, or are they going to go for a different role? I think they grab an AD carry. Ah, he locks it in just before I Ooh. get to say it. I think you grab an AD carry, and then you ban out the rest. Um, you kind of limit the weak matchups that an AD carry would have. And, you know, something we heard Reckless say on the Match of the Day video yesterday was maybe I just need to pick up the high horse or something along those lines and I just need to have a Tristana game. Well, yeah. it's not a Tristana game, but it no. is one of his classic Sivir And games. I like this. They've banned the Aurelia as well. Trying to limit those picks and kind of threaten Sivir and a lot of these team fights with that additional mobility. They've got a Cassio to protect Reckless. And Reckless on Sivir. So I feel like Fnatic are already telling us. They say, hey, we're going late game. <laughs> Buckle up, kids. <laughs> We're talking four item, Sivir, carrying home the game. They banned away a lot of the threats. The Jace now taken away, though they do not want to give Buipo that strong lane, potentially, on the side of Fnatic. I also think that Sivir does quite well into Ezreal, because you can spell shield it, so they're preparing for that potential pick coming out from Upset. Um, they could go for the Kai'Sa here, if you're Shalka. I think that it's one of the AD carries that can match Sivir in the late game. The other option is Vayne. Uh, Provides a lot of self-peel, it will get pushed in during the laning phase, but often does quite well in the 1v1 matchup. And, ooh, interesting, the Victor, that this is something we saw a lot at Worlds as a counter pick to Aatrox, and I think that what they want to do is get the Victor into the Aatrox lane. And, and so I, that kind of implies to me that they're expecting Odawamne to play at top so they can put Whippo on the Victor top. And do we have one of these situations where we're going to see 20 second swaps? Our team's going to fully commit to swap lanes as well, if necessary. We are going to find out. Kennen now locked in. Odawamne had some pretty solid success. Yes, he did get caught out in the mid game on this pick, but also had some crucial ultimates and map movements to help secure his team some early wins. But I like the way this is unfolding for these solo lane picks. Victor Cassio versus the Kennen Aatrox. That's a very explosive early game. Yeah. Uh... What I quite like from uh, Schalke is that if they can get the Schalke, if they can get the Kennen into the Victor matchup, it's definitely a much more favorable one for them, which means that they'll have a winning top and a winning mid, 
uh, and then bot will be relatively neutral. It'll just be a very farm heavy lane, which gives Memento a lot of lanes to play around. So he can group up with Abadage and look to try and set up, uh, sorry, he, Memento can group up with Ignar and look to play around Abadage or Oduamne to try and get them ahead. Now Fnatic though, rounding out their composition. See how they choose to combat some of the action that they're going for on the side of Shalka. And it is going to be the Nocturne pick locked in. Not super active early on all the time, but definitely incredibly powerful at that level 6 point for Broxa. So this Fnatic composition is very squishy. Uh, they do have excellent scaling on their side. You would assume, I mean, I'd like to say that we're going to see the blue build kind of slow with the Iceborne Gauntlet builds coming out from Victor. However, more recently we've been seeing a lot more of the AP Victor because of all the changes that he had following the World Championship. Um, and on top of that, like Cassio, you kind of want the tier to fully stack. You want to get to that late game, same with Civit. It's very much about team fights, but outside of the Civit Ultima, I'm not a massive fan of the engage from the side of Fnatic. And you look across the draft from Schalke, like they have strong pressure in mid with the um, Aatrox. Cannon is able to trade very effectively, especially against the Victor early on. And I just feel like their team fighting is monstrous as well. You have a Kaiser, one of the best team fighters in the game. You also have a Cannon with a huge AoE ultimate. You have the Engage from Sejuani, the pick potential with the Thresh. I think I just prefer Shalka's composition more. I just think it's a little more versatile and options in how you can actually win. And it feels just much more proactive. Fnatic have so many fantastic defensive tools. Braum Alt, Cassio Alt, all these things are so great for disengaging. But you're right, when they need to get a fight started on their terms, are we going to see it happen? That is, of course, the big question. As we look across both of these lineups, how is Nemesis going to look in this game? Is he going to look more comfortable? Will we see the opportunity? Now Trevor is standing by with SK Gaming's coach Sheepy and wants to get his thoughts about the matchup between Schalke and Fnatic. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Joined here by the head coach for SK Gaming, it is Sheepy. Now Sheepy, Schalke and Fnatic are about to play on the road. Fnatic, 0-3, maybe 0-4 if I'm not going to take away one of your wins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, what's happening? You know, how are Fnatic struggling? Is it on stage? Are you seeing this in scrims as well? I think this is like a really big transition period for Fnatic. Um, they have to implement Nemesis and they seem to struggle right now with it. I think also it's a different personality. Uh, Caps was very bubbly, right? Like a very vocal player overall. And I think Nemesis is like a different flavor. So they are just finding that right now. I think they have been very vocal about that too. Uh, I do think that overall Fnatic was always like a powerhouse in the EU LCS. So it's really like something that you're expecting in the LEC to return. Well, of course, this is a rematch of the Summer Split Finals with Schalke and Ulfia also having changes, a big rebuild. Um, Schalke, one of those teams that are sort of sleepers, dark horses. They, they seem to be performing better than at least I was expecting. What's your take on Schalke's team and, and how they're performing? Yeah, personally, I wasn't expecting that either. I thought that they, from our scrims against them as well, like way, way in the past, that we didn't think that they were that strong. Um, but they're surprising everybody, and I think that's the nice thing as well about LEC. Like, until you're on stage, until you really show what you got, you can't really rule anybody out, and I think Schalke is really the best example for that. So what's it going to take? Which of these players are going to be stepping up? Of course, while we're setting up for the interview, the draft was going, so we have missed large chunks of it. Yeah. Uh, but individual players, you know, where is the pressure going to be unlocked to pick up a win? I think for Fnatic, it's basically just implementing Nemesis way, way more. Like, uh, he was on Galio and he really didn't show, uh, show much. Especially against us, it was really difficult for him to do a lot. And I think that he basically needs to be a more powerful uh, house together with Broxa. So, obviously, I expect him to uh, step up and show way, way more because I think he is that talented. Um, but that needs to be enabled by the entire team. So, I really see that Broxa especially needs to be somebody who's like pushing that two versus two more. Okay, so you're definitely looking at Fnatic to fix more things to win the game. I'm putting you on yes. the spot in my last question, Sheepy. Who will win this game, Schalke or Fnatic? Uh, that's a really difficult one. Uh, I would like to see Fnatic win, right? Because we lost yesterday against Schalke. That's okay, okay, there we go. I mean, they are the best German organization. I gave them the award yesterday. Oh my god, you know? really? The quick shot awards. I can't, I can't say that right I know, now. I know you can't, unfortunately. But yeah, I think it would be really nice to see Fnatic win. Um, but, you know, if Schalke takes it, you know, then uh, you know, worthy of that it's as well. It's redemption for SK game. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, of course, Shippy, thank you so much. Good luck in your game against XL. Yes. We're going to head back to Dracus at the Castle Desk. Thank you very much, Trevor. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Get a little fist bump in there. I like Sheepy. He didn't want to make a strong statement either way. And I support that. You know, you got to be a little unsure. We talked about this already with the Fnatic games. You're always a little bit unsure. But Vedius, we've had time to digest this composition. Upset and Ignar have had time to go to the bathroom while we've waited. That was good. <sighs> got to get it out, man. It's important. Uh, That's why you go before, Dracos. <laughs> In the middle of a solo queue game, you don't get the pause function. You don't, you'd, you'd have to lose. So you go before or after. 
It's true. And also, as a quick side note, I have definitely, we've all been in that position where we're like, can Trevor come to the desk and sub in for me halfway through a cast? <laughs> we've asked that question before, but we'll stay off that topic now as we focus back, because I figured it out. The fanatic composition, Betty. Yes. I've figured you? it out. It, yeah. To me, it's just a late game fanatic composition. Well, they, yeah, that was what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of took the went, went down to my sales day a little bit, but uh, so yeah. To me, this is like quintessential. Do you remember when Fnatic uh, just whooped G2? You mean that final in Copenhagen? Yeah, where it was like, oh, reckless Penta, reckless Penta, reckless Penta, like one after another. I remember. That, this feels like that kind of composition where it's like, hey, so. We think we can out teamfight you if we just take the game long enough. So we're just going to do everything in our power to get to that point in the game. Yeah, so that's great. However, <laughs> um, <laughs> cool story. <laughs> cool story, bro. Um, however, the thing about teamfight comps is they work best when they kind of have something to play around. So if you kind of have a good engage or like a front line, um, that can then like soak up the initial damage, maybe get an ultimate or two thrown at them, then it means that the Sivir and the Cassio can better position. Now, the problem with Fnatic's comp is they don't really have that. Uh, that's why when I saw the Zac hover, I think that would have been better for them because I think it would have actually provided that tool and it could have split up Shalka, which when you have a Kennen and a uh, Sejuani would have definitely been a lot stronger. Um, so I'm quite fascinated as to how this Fnatic comp will work. Perhaps, excuse me, one of the goals that they have with the Nocturne is that once he hits level 6, he can try and make some stuff happen on the map, right? Once you get that ultimate, you have a lot of 2v2 pressure, and maybe he wants to try and set up some ganks towards the top side of the map. Maybe he wants to try and make something happen down towards bot. It's not like he doesn't have options. Uh, Kaiser Thresh are not exactly the most safe lane, which means that with a Brawl ulti, a Sivir ulti, Nocturne ulti, you can definitely find a kill here or there. So my eyes kind of fall onto Broxer to figure out whether or not he can find these early game plays and set up Fnatic to be this, uh, to reach this team fight point. And that's the thing I'm kind of curious about, right? We look at the upset Ignar bottom lane, we see how good this duo has looked through the past game. Hello, audience, I'm ready too. We are uh, moments away, working towards it. Uh, Invenius, I love this lane when they get ahead. I really do. I think it looks so good. My concern is, what if they get behind? What if Thresh doesn't get to be that guy that roams freely and throws hooks at will? What if Thresh is that guy, like he is in solo queue, where he's 06 down, he throws a random hook, he hooks the fed member of the team, and then he instantly dies? That's, that that's my concern. <laughs> um, but I don't think they're going to be playing to win lane. I think that what you'll often see is Thresh leave. He's going to get early Moby Boots, he's going to group up with Memento, and they're going to do what they've often done in the uh, LEC so far, which is look for kills in the early game. We're going to find out now, though, Vettius, as we get in the game. Ooh, Fnatic fans ready. People may not have faith in the team, but you can give faith in the fan base. They are out for blood. 2-1 the score for Schalke, going up against the 0-3 Fnatic. Blue side for Schalke, red side for Fnatic. You wouldn't expect it. 0-3 Fnatic. World Finals, two back-to-back -back splits. Debatable performance at MSI. But still, overall, like, very good year for Fnatic in 2018. And uh, kicking things off like this is definitely not the way that you want to start. So they'll be looking to secure their first win to date. They've gone back to kind of old school Fnatic. I like the fact that Nemesis is on a little bit more of a carry champion with the Casio. Can be dominant in laning phase once you get that first back, pick up the lost chapter. Um, or even the TN, you've got a little bit more mana to play with. Um, but yeah, we'll see what they're capable of doing, what lanes they'll look to focus. And for Schalke, or Abadage, rather. I'm just excited to see him not on Lissandra. Let's see if he can be more of a carry, or if uh, he will just be like that mid lane that we talked about, you know, the guy that just does his job. And he's been doing a good job so far in that role. Now we're going to see if he can get more. Oh, Ami looking very confident. Of course, has the Klepto, so generally comfortable extending these trades. Knows that he gets the consumable out of it. Did he get a red pot as well? Did he, did he like really he get a red pot, pot yeah, on the first did. two procs? Well, RNG is with him. Now he's just going to keep this one going. That red pot is disgusting. Oh my god, he's actually going to force him to flash. <laughs> he's just going to walk it down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, red pot is gross, folks. He's going to walk forward with the lightning rush. He's looking for one more. He's not going to dive him. Oof. So what you guys will what you guys will notice is that Bwipo actually got a junk of a uh, chunk of health in that last moment. The changes to time warp tonic mean that you get 50% of the heal from your pot. It, uh, at the beginning, and then you get the rest over the remaining duration. So uh, that's where he got that chunk of health from, and that's what kept him alive. But he's not flashless in the top lane. That's not how you want to be starting off the laning phase as Bwipo. And this just kind of solidifies Schalke having dominance, both in the top lane and the mid side of the map. But I say Aatrox is supposed to have pressure in mid. You can already see the Nemesis is actually uh, 
really pushing him under a tower and actually already building up a very strong uh, CS lead. And when you look at this matchup, of course, it's so critical to see Nemesis find an advantage. It's been such a struggle. He found that solo kill on Jazuke, but he's never been able to turn it into more. Always at a CS deficit across his games. And you need this guy to show up. He's proven himself mechanically skilled. You can see the stats across the board, that negative 22 CSD. The KDA is fine. He's still surviving. He's where he needs to be generally, but he just needs to be a little bit more upfront, needs to get a few more of those creeps in the lane. And many people will say, you know, in the laning phase, he hasn't had the best matchups. This isn't actually the best case scenario for him. However, the other side of the argument is he's been playing too safe in, uh, in matchups where he's not favored. And perhaps he could be doing more. He has found opportunities to find kills, find leads, and he hasn't been translating them. So we'll keep our eyes on uh, Nemesis. But same for Ab uh, Abadage. He came in, he had a solid performance on his Lissandra. He has died a little bit more, but I believe he was deathless yesterday on his Lissandra game. And uh, I've been overall impressed with what he's been able to do. But so far in this early laning phase, is struggling. Clearly, I read this matchup very, very wrong. I thought Aatrox would have way more power in the laning phase, but he's definitely getting pushed around by Nemesis. So there we are. I learned something new today. And Cassio hasn't even had to spam out on the mana pool there. But now the 5 4 of the play is now coming in, burning down the Ignite on Reckless. He's trying to back off. He already knows he's dead, and he's just going to give this one up. First Blood goes over to Upset. Clean play by Shalka. And I expected Shalka to be playing around the two solo laners, but Ignar on Thresh, Memento on any jungler, these two always work together. The flash in, the flayback from Ignar, the flash wasn't enough from Reckless, and Shalka, they find themselves with First Blood onto Upset. And that's a classic play. That's the Season 3 special. We all remember when Flash Flay into Hook was death from Thresh every time. They're reminding us of the good old days. So beautifully done here. Yeah, I love the setup. Uh, very little to break down, really. Just very clean from Ignar. Good use of the lantern through the lane. Really, really liked it. So Shaka off to a good start. No summoner spells now on Ignar. So a potential uh, gank opportunity for Fnatic once Broxa does hit that level 6 mark. But uh, for the time being, Shaka sit with an actual 800 gold lead. That's an insane start. Of course, Klepto is going to boost that gold stat a little bit from Odawamne on the top side. He's already winning his lane, so he should quite comfortably be able to find those procs. But additionally, that first blood, small CS advantage. Proxa, though, despite the level disadvantage, still pretty confident to move forward. Nemesis is advancing. The red buff's going to slow down Memento. We'll find the stun here, though. Does not want to extend the trade and is now in a position to contest this scuttle crab. Abadage on the way in, not quite going to connect on that first proc of the Dark and Blade, and that means both sides are going to back off. But Shalka going to walk away with the scuttle crab, and those procs are now not going to be able to take it away. So that was quite a funny trade to me because Nocturne in the early game is surprising. Oh, Memento oh. face checking. Hillsang roaming to mid. Giving up the bot side of the map there. Not able to get anything else out of it though. Both supports already out of their lane, Dracos. It, it didn't, they didn't even wait to level 6. Uh, you can see that Ignar has bought boots, and he's like, okay, I'm fast enough to leave Upset by himself now. I got him one kill. He's fine. I can go <laughs> elsewhere. I can play League of Legends. I love how they're both on the same page, too. They're like, yeah, do you want to play a slame phase? Oh, uh, no. no. Do you want to go gank? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, we'll just leave him. <laughs> Ignar now breaking the agreement, though, as he starts to come down. Oh, that's so well played! The sync up on the abilities. Reckless is going to die again. The Shalka bot lane is just too clean. That was fantastic from the duo. You can see the spell shield come out. Reckless is like, I'm fine. I'll spell shield the hook. But upset proxy, I believe, with the Q, or it was either it was the with, w, the w. with the W. With the Seeker. It's... I mean, it's either dumb luck or it is absolute brilliance, but that was incredible. Let's look back at it. Yeah, but let's have a look. So you can see that Reckless, he's seeing it. He spell shields the W. It's not enough to block the Q at the same time. And Ignar comes in, gets the flay. There's no flash available on Reckless. He burns the heal, but it's not enough. And Hillisang wasn't close enough. So really good stuff from the Schalke bot lane right now. 2-0-0 zero, zero for Upset. And remember, he was the all-pro AD carry in summer of last year. Reckless didn't play the majority of the split, and he said openly, you know, I'm fine with Upset having it. He deserved it. He earned it. But now Reckless is back. He's the primary AD carry. He's the guy people are looking at to be the next big thing for Fnatic. And in this laning phase, thanks to the introduction introduction of Ignar to Upset, they've already found themselves two kills. And their synergy is incredible. We look at both these players, Upset and Reckless, across from each other. Upset, the new generation of Prodigal AD carry. Reckless, kind of the older generation. And the CSD score for Reckless tells the story of Fnatic's losses. KDA is still fine, all things considered. But starting off like this, just reminding people why Upset is so well-respected. Memento coming in, too, and across the board. Schalke honestly look like they are just playing with their food right now. But yeah, going back to this bot lane matchup, you talked about it. Schalke has just looked great. When, when we saw the rebuild, I was definitely someone that looked at this roster and thought, 
that's it. You know, they're not going to reach the same heights. It's just back to square one for Schalke. What can we really expect? Ignard didn't look great on BBQ Oliver's last year. Memento was kind of, he only had one play style, be aggressive in the early game and nothing else. Oduwane, he had highs on Splice, but it wasn't really standout. And you just looked at this watch and you thought, maybe Upset can do something. But so many of the members have stepped up. They seem to already find synergy, and they just enable Upset to do what he does best, which is be an AD carry, carry games, and be fantastic at it. And one of the things that I love right now about the LEC is how many players who people were kind of doubting coming back now looking so good, Ignar being one of them, Fevivin being another. But in Ignar's case, you know, had an incredibly rough split. One of the worst splits of any player here, I think, when you look at how poorly BBQ did. He comes back in the EU, he comes back to the LEC. He does not miss a beat whatsoever. Instantly back on these playmakers, back on the thresh, exactly what the European fans know him for. No one's going to forget that Leona at Worlds. And it's a good look. Now look at Odo Omne. He, he's gone Whipple pretty low. He's actually going in. Flashing with the ulti. Looking for the third stack. He's going to lock him up. Trading back, though, with the Victor ulti as well. He went up just a little bit. Now I'm going to back off. Whipple definitely taking the short end of the stick there on that trade, but will be forced to back. Can't potentially bait in. Broxa using the sweeper. Will get spotted out, though. Odo Omne did have the diligence to lay down the ward. Flashes were traded in the top side of the map, which means that now that Brox is level 6, he could look for a play up towards Odo Omne. But it's always difficult to gank the cannon. One thing that people often forget, we don't have time for that. Ignaz looking for another play. I feel like he can't miss a hook. He can't miss a hook. He just keeps going forward, looking for another one. That's going to be the fourth stack. They're trying to find the lockup. Hillisang already getting burned down. He may not even have a chance. Upset grabs another one. Reckless is living out it's a nightmare on the bottom toe. side. It's not done yet. Here we go. Freddy Krueger into the bot lane. Just going to take him out. Reckless wants to wake up, but it's not a dream, baby. He's just getting dunked. Rampage for Upset. I misread this game completely. I thought it was going to be all about the solo laners, but Upset is the guy picking up all the kills. And while it's great for Upset, while we can talk about the fact that he's 4-0-0, you have to give the credit to the supporting cast, Memento and Ignar. The setup from this duo has been fantastic. Ignar has landed every single hook. He didn't bother going on to rank because he said, that's not our target. Hillasang is. Hillasang still has his flash, decided not to use it, and Memento then comes in clean sweep from the side, lands the ultimate, even though he was spotted on vision, Reckless didn't see it in time, and that is another death onto the 80 carry of Fnatic. And we were talking about four item timers, maybe you're looking at 35, 40 minutes, and every time Reckless dies, that timer gets longer and longer. That window gets farther and farther away, and Whippo is now in no man's land. Desperate to make that gravity field work, so 20 just barely getting stunned up means Whippo is going to be able to walk away from this one. He's trying to get something back in the trade. Already the videos. We look at the gold 10 minutes in. We've got a dragon in favor of Shaka. They got the Ocean Drake, which is gonna make a lot of these lane phases easier. And on top of that, they've got the 1.5k gold lead. It's honestly just a perfect early game. It's all on upset as well. Like, I remember Fnatic still have the late game, they still have the scaling, but <laughs> with how proactive Shaka are being, uh, will they really even be able to get there is the big question for me because Memento's been so active on the map. Ignar, you have to keep your eyes on him. Where is he? Currently, he's decided to return to the bot lane, but he's sitting in darkness just outside. Oh, never mind. He's going to reveal himself. Speaking of darkness, Brock's going to make his way to the bottom side. Upset. They have overstayed his welcome. There's the lantern coming out. Brock's now moving in. Wants to take him down. Ulti comes out there. Killer Instinct going to be used to take Upset to safety. Ready to turn it with the hook, but not going to find the chance. So, at the very least, Fnatic, they make their first gank of the game happen. They get both flashes out from Ignar and Upset. This will slow down the aggression from the Schalke bot lane and allow Reckless and Nelsang a little bit more time to farm. But Memento already answering. Mid has been pushed in. Top has been pushed in for Schalke. So the jungler has used this as an opportunity to reclaim an objective on the map. And the combined effort here, Abadage getting the mid lane pressure immediately going to the Raptors, taking more and more away from the Fnatic. Death by a thousand cuts everywhere but the bottom lane, where it is honestly just bleeding out. Brutal early game for Fnatic. Survival now, Vedius feels like the name of the game. How far can you stall out? You got wave clear from Cassio, you got a little wave clear from Victor, you got some wave clear from Sivir, and it feels like they're just going to have to hold on. They're going to do their best to hold on as long as they can. Fnatic definitely not what we expected them. You know, many had faith that they'll bounce back. They have to bounce back. Surely they'll be able to turn things around. But so far in this early game, I feel like it's been the main problem for this Fnatic squad. Finding these plays in the early game and Ignite. And the hook lands again. Hook. Waiting, holding off on the play plays. Both back, upset now, ready to move in. Going to take the lantern, buying a bit more time. Unbreakable used. Hillisang, though. Has to be careful, they do manage to stun up Upset and that will stop the aggression. Well played by the Fnatic bot lane to stop that fight in its tracks, but Memento is here and he's ready to go. 
will get spotted out by a ward, but Ignar already looking for the hook once again. Here the come Moby the Moby Boots. Boots. Gonna move in. The hook does get blocked by the spell shield. Eyes on the ultimate. He's just gonna dash in. They're gonna get the follow-up. Reckless taken down immediately. Brox and Nemesis just a little too late. And it's the flashless bot lane from Schalke that end up finding themselves another kill. Memento making his presence felt once again. Now Abadagi could be in some danger. Pulling back, trying to get the disengage. Beautiful use of the Darken Blade there. Fantastic stuff there from Abadage. And the first tower of the game will go down to Shuck. This has been a spectacular early game from Schalke. Excellent stuff. And all that gold, all that tower blade, they just went into the back pocket to upset. This man is going to get to two oh, items before side. Reckless no gets flash. one. Smite slowing him down. He's running for his life. The stun is there too. Reckless is here, but it might be too little too late. They're trying to save him. Roxa with the ulti. I don't think he can go in on this one, but he's looking for the opportunity. The charge will come through as well for the Rift Herald. They are getting everything they want on the side of Shalka. This Fnatic bot lane has been shut down. Broxa has not really been able to find any successful ganks. Now we see another all in on the top lane. Where Buffy goes down here. Kind of one of the last even points on the map for Fnatic. Definitely taking the back end of the trade, even with the XP advantage. Look, Treads early really does help, but on the bottom side, Schalke will convert that tower into a Drake. Nearly 4,000 gold is the advantage for Schalke right now. And I just, you know, we said in week one, Memento and Ignar, that duo, is what has enabled Schalke to find this early game aggression, and I love it. I love watching it. It's so different, and now, oh, Reckless, he's oh, gone Doesn't even need the duo. This man is two and a half thousand gold ahead of Reckless right now. There's just nothing Reckless can do. He's getting stat checked at this point. Oh, man. This is definitely a rough day for Fnatic fans. The audience has gone quiet as Schalke now sit at seven and zero. The perfect game is real for the side of Ooh. Schalke. They may, it's not the super mega ultra perfect game though because Fnatic did get two turret plates down towards the bottom side of the map. So that's the small, I don't know what's the words. Every time they introduce new minor objectives, we have to try to define perfect game again. It's like, yep. does a Rift Herald count? Well, like, yep. yeah, it has to. Does a single turret plating count? Point is, Schalke can still get a perfect game, um, but it's a long way off. We're only 15 minutes in and uh, Schalke have dominated. We kind of look at Fnatic, we look at their comp, and we say, late game. That's that's the best option they've got. But even then, the team fighting, I just feel is stronger for the side of Schalke. They have better engage. They also have a Kaiser. So you're waiting for like the 500 CS win condition, Sivir, that we like to talk about as really the, the last vestige of hope. Maybe Fnatic can find some picks. But right now, things definitely look very dire for Fnatic. Absolutely, and the sad part of this is is that finally we see Nemesis in a good spot in the laning phase, has himself a small CS advantage, quite comfortable against the Aatrox here. But right as he's feeling comfortable, the rest of the map is collapsing. Whippo now may have to face the Wrath of Ignar's Thresh. Eyes on the hook, where's the death sentence gonna go? We're just gonna use the ulti to clear out the wave. I don't even have enough time to pop the demolition, but Abadage is going to leap forward. The ultis are gonna miss. Fancy forward from Whippo to dodge both of those. Does walk away. Ooh. Well, four members of Schalke on the top side of the map. Brox is hanging around the bot. Fnatic want to try and trade towers, maybe even set up a dive, but they don't feel confident in the play. So Oduwamne just going to back away from that one. He sees who's here, and he realizes, okay, this might be a little bit dangerous. So Schalke going to continue sieging on the top side. Will be a trade of objectives, but Schalke is still in full control of this game. They just keep giving this man solo gold, too. They are determined to get this Kai'Sa taken off. And He's already gonna level 10. He's going to do it. Flash forward the play. Where's the hook going to go? He's just waiting. He's biding his time. Doesn't even need it. Upset godlike. 16 minutes into the game. 1,000 gold bounty. Two fully completed items as well. Oh, this bot lane is looking good. And I was a doubter of Ignar. I felt like he could only play one style. Fun fact, his style is in the meta. And it suits him <laughs> perfectly. He hasn't proven you wrong. <laughs> But it's a good style. Oh yeah, it's definitely a good style for this meta. I love the aggression from Ignar. This is why so many EU fans thought that by the end of the split, he'd be a top support in Europe. They thought that his time on Misfits was not wasted and that he would come back and he would be a strong contender. And you know, paired up with upset, he's certainly looked good so far. Only lost so far this split being to, uh, I want to say it was G2 that Schalke lost to week one. So, damn Schalke looking good. Very impressed with what they've been doing. Now let's see how they close if they can, right? Because they've they've got a very fed AD carry. A very fed, very good at killing Baron kind of AD carry. Yes, but what you've got to remember is the rest of your team is actually relatively even. If you kind of compare the two junglers, the items are actually very similar. The top laners, items very similar. Casio 
actually very similar to the Aatrox. And while there is a big discrepancy in the AD carries, if you just take a bad fight now, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to win. What if Upset can't actually get close enough to the fight? What if that all your gold can't do damage? So you still have to be patient. You still have to show respect to Fnatic because it's not an across-the-board gold lead. You've just got a very fed single character. Ooh, an incredibly fed is half the health of Reckless just instantly disappears on the back of an auto attack and then a Cathy and Rain. But you're right, Vidius. So that does put more pressure on Upset and the Chalk lineup to protect him if they want to go for any of these big plays. For now, though, the map is split up. They're ready to go into this 1-3-1. One, one. Aatrox on the top side, Ken on the bottom. The three-man core taking up the mid lane. See how well they can execute this. Obviously, one of the more difficult strategies in League of Legends, but they have all the tools necessary to get it started. Oh, blocking that one there. Memento is going to dash to safety. He's still going to get knocked up. One more auto will stun him, but while they're trying to take out Memento, Upset's got his eyes on this tower. Oduwamne waiting in the wings, ready to go in. This kind of an ultimate is going to be huge. The flash forward, two members locked up. Reckless barely manages to make it out, but it's too little too late. Abadage coming in, and that man has a lust for blood. He is unafraid to push a little bit further into this one. Resurrecting now. Can he make it out to safety? Does look like his life will get traded back. Fnatic finally getting something. Looking across the board, though, just a brutal fight. Hilla saying desperate to recoup some losses here, but Schalke monstering through that dive. Fnatic have to be happy with the single kill, but definitely inches away from just getting completely wiped. Yeah, and it was all thanks to Oduwamne when he roams up from the bot side of the map. The fighting might not be over yet, though, Drake's nemesis looks for a pick. Wants to fire back. Upset is here, though. Now Memento has been left in no man's land. No ulti for Oduwamne. That's going to be huge. Whippo, where is he going to go? Gravity Field already laid down. He's running forward. He knows Upset is over the wall. Has opted to start up the Infernal. Roxa is on the way. They are in possession to contest this one, but it does feel like a risky gambit. Trying to take advantage of the alt cooldowns being gone. All it takes is one member to get stunned up for Upset to find a kill here. They're zoning out, and they are going to back off. Seeker comes out, sidestepping and Vettius. This is just what so are they gonna incredibly do? What tense. What are they going to do, Draco? They're just staring each other down. Upset. He runs towards the mid lane. He wants to generate a bit of pressure. Dignar. The hook coming out of Fog of War. Yeah, that... He's a veteran. He's, he's got the reactions necessary to stop that from happening. So I like this stuff from Schalke. They find themselves... I believe it was a one-for-one -one trade in the end. Uh, Abadage, unfortunately, underneath the tower. Couldn't really get out of that situation. But it will give Schalke priority over this Drake and they will be able to convert it into another objective. So overall, big win for Schalke. And when we get into the replay, I want us to keep our eyes on Oduwamne because what you'll notice is how he sets up the wave to allow Schalke to come in from the flank. So what you'll see is he set up the bot lane and he's very cleverly walking in from the back. And even though he's spotted on wards, he should be seen in this small brush Fnatic don't respect it, so then he's able to come out from the backside. You're going to see Memento come in from the middle as well, land a clutch ultimate onto three, and then they set up for the dive. So Schalke find themselves what should have been a clean fight, but with some good stopwatches from Fnatic, allow Fnatic to at least get one kill back. But again, the key thing here is Schalke took down the turret, they secure a Drake off the back of it, and they end up trading one for one, but also finding another kill onto Reckless. And taking away those stopwatches is actually brutal because those cooldowns are what you hope to turn a game, and only turning some into one for one trade not necessarily ideal but it is a start for fanatic Vettius. and most importantly they have denied the perfect game and that's <laughs> it's a good start and to be fair the gold lead is now staying at about 4,000 it hasn't really propelled that much more for fanatic and you're still kind of looking at that scaling option again what a reinforced nemesis at two items he's still doing pretty well on the Casio he is a threat that you've got to respect on the side of fanatic Whippo as well fully completed the hex core he's scaling well on uh, the Victor right now and you would imagine he is going more towards that AP build, meaning that in these team fights he's going to offer a lot of damage. It's just Reckless that is really struggling right now, and once he gets that 3-4 items, then he'll be a little bit more relevant. Um, so it's very much a difference between how involved can Schalke get upset in these fights. Can they set it up to allow him to just freely dish all this damage out and then snowball over for now? Because he still has, he has his 3 items. He's at late game Kai'Sa already. Uh, being level 13, 2 points in his ultimate as well. Everything looks great for Schalke. Absolutely does. We are going to have a quick pause coming out here. I'll update you guys as we get more information on the cause and context. And the good news is, is that, yes, four-item Sivir is kill everyone Sivir. Five-item Sivir, even better. But three-item Sivir can clear waves pretty much indefinitely. And you mentioned the upgraded hex core. It makes it easy, too. So biggest question now is Schalke. Baron setups. Now, they were really good when they had a Lissandra to just pretty much guarantee wins in those kind of team fights. Now they've got an Aatrox. Things are a little bit different. So we will get to see how effective Schalke can be at setting up these Barons to try to close out the game. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they set up the Baron. Uh, 
depending on how long this pause is, we might have an opportunity to talk a little bit about how you would set up the Baron, um, because there are a couple of steps in which you can utilize uh, your vision and the pressure that you have across the board. Um, but when we get a little bit more information on the pause, uh, we will update you. It looks like and we are headed back, in back into game. So uh, we're going to resume. Thank you very much for bearing with us, ladies and gentlemen. And now we can see Schalke setting up this vision. So right now, they're just trying to keep these minion waves pushed up. They're trying to get a bit of deep vision. And what you see is you can struggle with, uh, with actually pushing these control wards out of the enemy jungle. So in order to do that, you just have to make sure that you maintain pressure over these waves. You'll notice that Shaka keep returning to mid, to top, keep pushing out these waves, and then moving into the enemy jungle. But Shaka have abandoned, setting up a band, and they're actually looking for a pick. Just looking for the pick. Easy. Odawamne has the ultimate up and available and pretty much nothing Victor can do in that exchange. Major cooldown, of course, used, but happy to grab that kill. Now sets up for control over the Baron Pit. Interesting stuff there from, uh, from Fnatic. They are able to find the kill. So you can actually see the entire map right now. Typically what you're expecting when you want to set up for things like the Baron is you want to make sure that you have the mid pushed up so that you have pressure in that wave. You also want to have the top side pushed up. And then once you've gained control over these two waves, you then move into your own river first and you set up these control wards. You can already see them being set up from the side of Fnatic. Once you've cleared out the vision around the Baron area, you then want to try to extend your vision deeper into the enemy jungle so that you can prevent them from actually getting anywhere near the pit. And then once you've done that, you have two options. You can either look for picks, like in this area or this area of the map, or you can just force the Baron uh, and then force your enemy into a uh, visionless zone, and then you can look for a favorable fight. So that's what Schalke is going to be looking to do next, but they kind of went against the textbook, and instead they just went bot and found themselves a kill. And you can see how not much of a nightmare it would be for them to fight in one of those pinches that you're talking about if Schalke are able to take control there. You, I mean, you've got the cannon. You've got Natrox. If people group up, if they stand on top of each other, there's just too much AoE damage right now on the Schalke lineup with the kind of lead they've got. Hill is saying, though, is going to sidestep the hooks. That does mean the fight, not going to get the pick, not going to get anything more. Question is, when do Shalk actually try to start this Baron? They are getting the mid push, as you said they would, Vettius. Now maybe we see them clear out some of this vision. So you can see them slowly trying to break in deeper. Um, remember that they can also just force a fight. That would be the best case scenario for them. Just get upset in the thick of things. He's almost completed his fourth item, but... They have to show respect, and that vision is getting deeper and deeper. They maintain pressure bot. You'll also note that Odo Omni doesn't have the teleports. Every time he pushes out bot lane, he's making his way towards the mid lane as well, saying, all right, guys, I'm here in the event that something should happen. And they now have their eyes set on this mid tier one, which Fnatic forced to clear out. And oh, look, Fnatic lose more and more vision of their jungle. Taking it back, and of course, Odo Omni incredibly close to that TP cooldown coming up, Eddie. So I think we might see Shalka start to pressure this Baron, start to threaten. Hill saying they're going to look for the engage, trying to find it immediately. Upset now running out to safety. Broxen needs to find this kill, but he flashes with the wall. Broxen's going to chase it down. Is he the hero Fnatic needs? But no, Odawamne trying to shut it down on the backside. He's going to drop. He's not going to get anybody. Fnatic making the most of what could have been a bad fight, but at the end of the day, just barely holding on as Memento finds a kill. Nemesis coming over the wall. Abadage wants to keep it going. Reckless may have the damage to come through. Abadage taking down Reckless. Nemesis firing back. It is an absolute bloodbath in the jungle. Ignar kicking down. Finally, we see Nemesis show up. And it ends up being a 4 for 4, which is the best case scenario for Fnatic. They get a shutdown onto Upset. All these summoner spells were burned, and we talked about it. If Upset is not involved in the fight, there are still enough threats on the side of Fnatic that they can come out on top. And it's just Upset. He's trying to clear this wall. Hillisang sees him out of position. The rest of the team capitalized. Brox and Hillisang diving onto the AD carry. Odo Omni is alone on the back end of the fight, but he's not enough to deal with the two carries of Fnatic, where they're both able to escape with their lives. Now, this is where both teams overextend just a little bit. Memento wants to get a kill. Nemesis flashes in. Abadage doesn't need to go for this play, but he thinks if he can kill them both, he can get even further ahead, maybe even get the shutdown gold away from Nemesis, but instead all he does is give more gold to the dangerous snake lady, and now Nemesis <laughs> is 4-0-0, zero, and zero, almost completing his death cap third item. All eyes have to be on Nemesis now because for Reckless, this is his most deaths in an EU game ever. ULCS, wow. LEC, does not matter. Most deaths, seven coming through across here. A man normally known for his calm, safe positioning, getting caught out over and over. And now Nemesis was kind of, people were wondering, can this guy step up? And he already has, but can he carry it through to find Fnatic the win? And, and I mean, it's difficult not to reference caps in these situations, right? Because when you look back at last year's Fnatic, and Caps was 4-0-0 on Casio. 
the thing you'd always be saying is, this game ain't over. This game isn't over. When Caps has that kind of a lead, you always know that Fnatic have that carry potential. And now, unfortunately, that pressure falls onto Nemesis. Level 16, very fed Cassio, can be huge in these team fights, but he has to carry the weight of being Fnatic's primary carry, dealing against a very fed three and a half item upset who's just looking to be a bigger carry for Shao. And of course, they were very fortunate in that fight. Broxa finds the perfect ulti. He has the flash to follow as well on the Kai'Sa, but if that Kai'Sa doesn't die in that fight. It goes a very different way. Fnatic need to find another fight just like that if they want to come out on top. Pretty much any fight they're going to win, Vettius feels like it has to start with the Kai'Sa dying instantly. Because the Infinity Edge is now completed for upset. He's at four items sitting quite comfortably. Reckless just barely scraping into two and a half. Have to hope that with this back, he picks up his third, but may not have enough gold. Just wave clearing a little bit. You can see that a lot of the vision from Shalka right now is coming out around the river and a lot of the entrances, but because they lost that last fight, they can't quite set up deep vision into the enemy jungle. They need to reclaim pressure over the waves before they can start to threaten this Baron once again. And they are very scared of getting into that pit against a severe Cassio uh, Victor, because that's a very closed space where a lot of AoE damage can really do a lot of damage to uh, Shalka. So they're showing that respect. They're primarily focusing on sieging these waves, getting these vision, looking for either the ideal fight or a pick. But they are slowly forcing Fnatic back. Shipping these towers down as Fnatic are forced to rotate, of course, consistently forced to take the long way through their jungle when they don't have that vision. So slowly but surely wearing down the Fnatic lineup. It is a war of attrition now, Vettius, is what it feels like. Shaka definitely, you know, the ball is in their court, but they also just can't get too aggressive. We saw what happened when they did. Nemesis was ready to punish. Broxa was ready to punish. So they have to give Fnatic the respect they deserve. But Fnatic, I would say, doing quite well to survive as long as they have and will look to be a complete stomp in the first few minutes. Memento trying to get that ward. Isn't quite able to do it. Fnatic are able to group up in the jungle because they don't have a midway that they need to clear. That will be important relatively soon, so you can still see Memento hanging around. He's just waiting for that wave to push in, and then he's like, all right, one of you has to go clear it. I know I'm going to have a numbers advantage, which means I can clear out your control, and there's nothing you can do about it. So there we see Ignar, very textbook. Now, are they actually going to start this? Two members actually kicked it off. They shouldn't be spotted out, but there is the blue trinket. This is actually very fast coming out from Upset. This is likely going to be a fight. Hook up going over the wall. They're immediately going to leap in with that killer instinct on the Kai'Sa. Now I want to find a little bit more, but on the backside, it's Odawame. He's going to be the hero coming through, cutting through those health bars. The AP Cannon tearing through the Fnatic lineup. And now Hillisang on the back foot. Whippo running for his life. But maybe the Victor can turn it. Ignar's going in, but there is nobody there with him. He missed the call. Now pulling back, upset threatening their memento so incredibly low. Reckless alive on the side. Are they going to be able to find it? Yes, moving in. Whippo trying to run, trying to make it out. He's going to trade one back. Absolutely bloody. Are Shalka healthy enough to start this? Looks like the answer is yes. I think they only need memento and upset to secure the Baron, but Shalka, they were just drawing Fnatic in. They used Baron as bait to kick off the fight in that enclosed space. And while, yes, it was a little overdrawn, it didn't go exactly the way Shalka wanted, they still find themselves three kills. They're still going to secure this big objective and Schalke walk away happy. At the end of the day, only losing Odoamne there as well as Ahmedage, and it just incredible team fighting there. They did not hesitate to leap over that wall, Vettius. No, it was it was all planned. They were they were ready for it. And respect to Broxer for spell shielding that ulti at the last second. But the problem is Nemesis is now in a really dire situation because he's forced to retreat almost immediately and he just gets melted. His ultimate does land onto the Aatrox, but that's about it. It only buys a little bit more time. And Odo Omni is just able to melt through the clumped up Fnatic members now. Unfortunately, Ignar goes in when the rest of his team can't really follow. Upset doesn't have the ultimate to chase onto that. While Odo Omni does end up finding a kill here, he unfortunately can't get out of that situation because he's stunned up by the gravity field. Still though, Schnauke find themselves the Baron. They're 17 to 6 in kills. They have an 8,000 gold lead. And I don't think they're going to slow down. The siege will begin. They'll threaten all three lanes. They may even just group up and dive if they really want to, because that cleanse is unavailable for Nemesis right now. We saw a good semi-decent disengage from Fnatic last time. They're hoping for those ultimate cooldowns to turn this one against them. Once, if Oduamne finds another flank, when his flash is back up, it feels like that is going to be the final nail in the coffin for Fnatic Reckless. Three items starting to build towards four. Maybe they can pull out a team fight win, but honestly, Vedius, as you said, the gold lead is massive. The tower lead is massive, and Shalker are very much in control. How much can they actually get done with this Baron, though? Will they be able to break open the base? I think so. Right now, they're just doing a 1-4 set. Ooh, that was a crit onto Broxa from Upset. I'm curious.
curious as to whether or not they just go for the dive or if they're just going to slowly chip away at these towers. You can see Odoame grouping up with the bot side as well. Now pulling back, trading though, pushing pressure down from Abadage, trying to guide that cannon minion in. Fnatic slowly but surely rotating down. There's not a point of pressure on the top side for Shalka right now. So they're not able to split up too effectively so this Fnatic close. lineup. Yeah, Fnatic doing a good job of drawing the aggro of the uh, cannon minion, meaning that uh, that tower will not go down, but it will give time for Upset to go to the top side of the map. Fnatic, this is a small window where they could look to fight because all the gold is now not grouped up with the rest of the team. But they're waiting for a misstep from Upset. Yeah. They've got Brox awaiting the wings, but Ignar's here too. If he commits with the ult, he's only at level 13 Nocturne. Against 17 Upset, or the Kaiser rather, I don't think he can kill him. <laughs> like, I think he's the highest level in the game. Yeah. Oh no, Abadagi is level 18. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hope if you're Fnatic, but you're right. Challenging Smite probably not enough to stop all that damage. Ignar, though, fishing for the hook, is not going to find it. Once again, the slow, steady siege is going to focus on taking down this tower, using the lantern to get in a few extra shots. They're going to try to walk this one down once the tower breaks. Shalka feeling very much empowered to walk into the base, ready for the fight setup. All eyes on Odawamne. That cannon ult is going to be key if they want to start a fight on their terms. Just an incredibly tense game for Fnatic, that is. It, we look across it. Tense. I would call it a dire. I would call this a very one-sided affair in favor of Shalka. The ultimate did come out from Memento. Here's the engage from Fnatic. Immediately they're going to use the lantern to walk to safety. Bupo is chasing with this storm, but is not going to find anybody. They're now desperate to find upset. The ulti is going to come out, but it goes the wrong way. Nocturne ulti going to come in as well. And suddenly Ooh. it's Odawam on the backside. Broxa still going to live though. Reckless finally doing enough damage just to delete. Abadage is going to get taken down. Shalka, are they going to continue to extend this fight? Or are they just going to back off? They've got both inhibitors, but they want more. Reckless now bleeding. He's running for his life. We got to back out here. Hill is taking out an instant. Upset is flashing forward. This man is not afraid. There are three low health targets. Montage moments right here, but if he overextends, he could drop immediately. That's the double. He'll be happy with that one as he backs off. Now, three members of Fnatic are the primary carries, which means that they should have enough wave clip to at least defend this top tier three. But with Memento's ultimate on its way back up, I don't know if they want to gamble it. It will be able to force Shaco away. It looks like Shaco is just going to take the safe play for now. You can see Reckless starting to look a lot more confident in these fights. He knows he has enough damage to shred through some of these members of the Shalka lineup, but still, gotta give respect to the cannon flanks, gotta give respect to the, the Aatrox damage, as well as the potential for Kai'Sa to leap in. Now, I do think that Odoane has had some really good flanks so far in the LEC. I would argue that this one wasn't one of them. Uh, 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 while it looks good on paper, unfortunately, the rest of Shalka are not in a position to follow up. The ulti isn't available for Memento. Upset doesn't have his ulti. And while Abadage tries to close the gap, the Nocturne ultimate makes it really hard to follow up as well. So, unfortunately, he just kind of went in 1v5. Yes, he gets a couple summoner spells, but he doesn't find any kills, which means that he ends up just giving away his life. Now, fortunately, the rest of Shalka do convert that into an inhibitor, and their fifth Drake of the game, there will be a sixth one. No. Really? Yeah, but Spawn for 35. Yeah, but no, I no, thought no, it was no, no. 28, isn't it? Or No, 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 it's 35. If the next Drake to Spawn will be an Elder, right? We should know this. I'm con I'm, I'm It's convinced. a quiz for all you at home. <laughs> Does the Elder Dragon spawn next? Yes, it's Elder. It's definitely Elder. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say 35 minutes. So that's to be 29, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're good. We're good. Basic math, elementary school. It's coming back to us. It's a, it's a six-minute spawn timer on the Elder Drake. Remember that, because it got changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We're good, we're good. But the we're interesting good. thing, Vegas, I want to point this out, because we saw this yesterday, too. Five Dragon games are so much more common now. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy to me, because we were lucky if we got three. People just ignored Cloud Drake for, for years at yeah, a time. Yeah, but it got a small buff the level one one did. But also, like, just picking up Drakes, because as you rightly say, because it's not easy to get five, you're guaranteed Cloud plus something else, right? And you've seen the amount of regeneration that three oceans gives you. It's crazy. Like, it's actually really good. So it, it makes sense to put value on Drakes, because it also uh, makes the win condition of Elder Drake so much stronger now as well. So I definitely think they're a lot more valuable than they were in the past. And uh, we're getting so many Infernals too. We had like nine yesterday, and now we've got two today. Good thing Trevor was casting, or we wouldn't have been sure yeah, how many drinks have, there were exactly. We but luckily, he tracks that relentlessly. <laughs> now the Baron gonna just be melted away. Odoamne just zoning Fnatic. They can't even approach. Excellent vision setup from Shalke. It also helps when you have two inhibitors down. So uh, now they're just going to group up topside. They don't need to go back to base. That is a full item upset. There's a four item nemesis. And Reckless, level 16, three and a half items. 
I don't know if that's really enough to turn this game around. My eyes fall onto Nemesis to be the guy that can maybe stall this out for longer, but I feel like he has had a good game so far, but uh, definitely doesn't help when your bot lane goes 1-12. and 12. And the pressure is on him to make an insanely clutch play if they want to turn this. As a member with a lot of the gold here. One more auto will break the tower. Third inhibitor in the sights of Shalka. They can slowly but surely close out this game. Question is, are they going to go for an aggressive play and a dive? Are they going to try to use the cannon ultimate? Or will they just let the cannon minions do the work for them as they push in for this third inhibitor? They're just pushing the minion waves in. They're trying to force Fnatic to split apart. You can see the amount of poke damage that the cannon and the Kaiser also have. And they're just slowly working their way in. The third inhibitor will likely fall. Fnatic, they kind of have to go for a last ditch fight here. They do have pretty good wave clear though with the Sivir and the Victor. Holding on as best they can. One final fight could be everything for the Fnatic lineup. Can they hold here and face another one? Or is this where it ends? The minion waves are gone though. As you said, they are clearing through them quite quickly. Fight! Someone do something. Very slowly. They're not taking the risk, Vidius. No, I think they've watched enough reckless Sivir highlight reels to know maybe give the man respect and take the game slow. I mean, that, that's one argument, but they're definitely taking their time. Ooh, slowly being chipped away. Fnatic have to go for a fight at some point. They will lose this game if they don't. How much time left have we got on the Baron? Flash forward from Memento, he does miss the ulti there. Inhibitor now going to respawn on the bottom side. Broxa though getting chunked out. Major cooldowns burned. Still about a minute and a half Now gonna use the, the ulti as well from Whippo though. Definitely not gonna be the fight that they want to get kicked off. Just trying to, to force the, the pressure. Back. Yeah, here we go. Three members are down. There should be at least one tower. So, saying. so you will just get caught out here. Reckless though, ready to go into the thick of it. That is going to be the Nocturne ulti. Redemption immediately to heal up this lineup. And now they're backing off. Nexus exposed. Set in the sights of Shalka here. Will they put Fnatic down to 0-4? Looks like they're going to try to find the interest of the fight Ooh. there. It's the Odo ultimate. It's clean from the cannon. And it is an absolute bloodbath. Triple for Odo Wamne. The fountain will barely keep Nemesis safe. Absolute dominance coming in from Shalka. Excellent game from Schalke overall. Yes, it was a little slow to close out. Perhaps they could have done a little bit more with the lead that they had been able to build up. There was one bad fight for them in the enemy jungle, but you can't fault Schalke. They took it slow, they took it steady, they got upset incredibly fed, and they, they played a clean game. I was very impressed. Really good stuff there from Schalke. Yeah, at the end of the day, we look at it, the early game was incredibly dominant. They played it out slowly but cleanly there. Of course, a few fights where Fnatic were able to scrape some advantages back in their favor, find a few kills, take upset down. But at the end of the day, it just simply was not enough to surpass what was an incredibly large gold lead built up over the course of what was, I mean, Ignar and Memento together. 100% man. I destroyed. love this duo. I absolutely love this duo so much. Uh, it reminds me of the Memento Null Scaring days, but I just feel like Ignar just has that extra bit of fire in him that synergizes so well with Memento, where they're both always looking for plays, they're not afraid to take that gamble. And the fact that they found so many successful ganks and kills down towards the bot side of the map was just so impressive to me. Love seeing that from Shalka. I can't wait to see more Memento and Ignar together. And while Upset did get a lot of the kills, he did do damage, I want you to remember who set the carry up. The cast behind the star. That's what I want people to remember when considering player of the game today, Dracos. I think Ignar is going to get it. I think there are simply too many so. Thresh highlights in that game. Not that Memento did not do awesome. Not that Upset wasn't there in the fights. Even Odawamne with some incredible cannon ults to come ahead in those team fights. AP cannon alive and well and good to see. Now, I will say, if we're being a little nitpicky, <laughs> Abadage, he didn't stand out to me. Now, that's not a bad thing, because obviously he didn't need to, right? But again, I think this just reinforces that he's not the kind of mid laner that you need to be a shining star of the team. He's just someone you can rely on to be solid, consistent, and you just look at the top laner and the AD carry to be your late game carries, whereas Memento and Ignar are kind of your early game playmakers. They just seem to have the whole package, Schalke. And to be fair, Abadage got a sign, uh, shine a lot yesterday on that Lissandra. Yeah, that's very true. Different on the Aatrox today, but still a good look for him. Now, if you want your favorite to win key up player of the game, you need to head over at LO Esports on Twitter and vote. Memento, Upset, and Ignore are your options. Good options. I would go Ignore, personally. I mean, yeah, we haven't seen a Thresh highlight reel like that in a long time. I mean, last time we saw that, what, TSM were knocked out of playoffs and <laughs> in LCS? That was, that was clean. Yeah, the I best, very much enjoyed it. The best play by far, though, and I hope this is a highlight that is remembered for a long time, is the sync up 
on the Kaiser yes, Void Seeker yes, yes, plus. Yes. Very, very good. <sighs> the uh, the death sentence. Yeah, the death sentence. No, I'm just saying it's like it's so. Oh, I see. I beautiful. see. Beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. It was good. And also, we have to quickly mention zero four fanatic. Ooh, first time in their history, I believe, that that's happened to the organization. So, uh, and on that big oof, Quickshot is standing by with upset. So let's send it over to him. I, I am indeed. Thank you very much, Vedius. And I'm super disappointed you missed the opportunity. Fanatic Null Fear have been defeated by Shelka. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. You had a gigantic smile walking around the stage. 3-1 now. You know, how are you feeling after the win? Uh, I'm feeling really great. Especially because of the way we won, because I felt like I was really in charge of the game and was carrying a lot, so it feels really amazing. Yeah. Now, of course, you're one of the suggestions, one of the options for Kia Player of the Game, along with Memento and Ignar. Do you deserve Player of the Game, or does Ignar deserve Player of the Game because he set you up for the kills? Uh, I, I think you're allowed to be honest. Okay, I think Ignar deserves it because he was really smurfing, but. In the end, the AD carry should get it because support is not so important role. So oh, there we I go. <laughs> not so important. <laughs> um, listen, the very second kill that you got onto Reckless in lane, uh, you timed your W with Reckless death, uh, with the death sentence onto Reckless. Was that communicated? Yeah, we communicated it. The moment we saw him be so far up, we said, I said, I will just W and you hook at the same time. And if we're lucky, then we will just get the kill there. So but it was really great that it worked out. Upset, you are one of the most controlled and calm players I've ever had the pleasure of, of casting and working with. Today, you're giddy with excitement. <laughs> um, this Shalka roster continues to surprise. Is this a surprise to you as well? Or did you know it was going to be this way? I mean, judging from scrims, I think we're a really strong team. So I, I'm not really surprised that we are this successful on stage currently. I mean, it's still so early in the split, so we just have to see how it develops and keep working together. But I'm just very happy to play with Igna. I feel like he really helps me a lot. And um, he's just so good himself as well. So together, we, we can just carry so hard, I feel. It's a really good duo. And something that we on the broadcast team have talked a lot about is how Memento and Ignar seem to be working very well together. Um, is this something that Schalke as a team has sort of practiced or you know, spent time developing, how they work around the map, etc.? Yeah, I mean, I think we obviously put a lot of time into support jungle, like working together, but also Igna and Memento both want to play together. So it's just really easy, I think, to play with these two because they communicate a lot and t say where they want to go and I can just right click a bit and they set everything up for me. Yeah, exactly. AD carry is the most important role, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, Just a few more quick <laughs> questions. Of course, Upset, you played in the final of the summer split last year and now you started three and one in spring in the LEC. I'm going to look forward. Where is the Schalke going to end? when we get to playoffs of the spring split? I mean, it's really early in the season, so it's very hard to tell, uh, like how all the teams will develop. So, I, I mean, hopefully I will be in the final again, but it's just very hard to tell right now. All right, and then one very last question just before we head over to the analyst desk. Fnatic is now zero and four. It is one of the very, very big stories. World Championship finalists, and they're really struggling with the loss of caps. You know, can you comment on what you're seeing and why maybe they're struggling? Mm, it feels like they're playing a bit desperate and tilted, I'm not sure. It, because even if you take caps out of this team, they sh still should be a very, very strong team. But right now it just doesn't seem to be clicking quite yet and caps loss seems to have done a lot of damage. So uh, I think they will just need time. I think they will still be a very strong team later. Okay, so it just needs a little bit of time. Congratulations yeah. again you. on the win. Yesterday, I appointed Schalke no Field the best German organization in LEC. You cemented it today. <laughs> We're going to head over to the analyst test to wrap up the game. Thank you very much, Trevor. Fantastic interview there with Upset. Very happy and rightfully so with that performance. Also saying, hey, you know, we can't overreact too much. It is early in the split. Well, I'm going to do it for him. Schalke Nulfir is insane and that bottom lane is fantastic. I want to straight away dive into the replays because, you know, you start with a level playing field, right? Fnatic, yes, they're the underdog. Is this where they are going to turn it around? And in a span of 10 minutes, Everything gets shattered because that bottom lane of upset, Ignar, with a little help of Memento, crushes him. I'm going to say it started a bit faster than the 10 minutes. It was yeah. a level one play on the top lane and then just an absolute massacre on the bottom lane. Ignar and upset were on fire today and just put Hilly and Reckless in the ground. I actually think this is the best early game I've seen in the LEC. Like, Misfits are challenging it, but the amount of times we saw Reckless and Hillisan get caught out. I mean, Reckless was sitting 0-5 because Ignar, Upset, and Memento constantly ganked this lane, came back time after time, and caught them
them out over and over. You only have one spell shield, buddy, and it wasn't enough. It was just... I mean, also textbook, you know, they already got those kills. They know we can go down there every single time and pad our stats. Yeah, it's about recognizing where your windows of opportunity are. Yeah. And there was a very early flash that was burnt on the 2v2. And I don't think the observers caught it the first time around about what happened, but immediately the call seemed to be, okay, Memento, path down here. We've got the lantern. I'm going to throw it over the shoulder and we're just going to gank them repeatedly. And when you look at the composition, it was very clear that Schalke had drafted for priority in the lane phase. Vedia said it on cast. I completely agree with him, but I expected it to be top lane. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the Kennen, it's the Aatrox. I was like, okay, they're going to just chill bottom lane. You know, Ignar's there to keep Shalk or uh, to keep upset safe, and it's just going to be Memento bouncing between top and mid. But because they saw that window, the flash is down, we can punish it, and then just continue to hard feed onto it. I was like, damn, like this game's over before it began. Are you impressed by that adaptability by Shalka? probably going in with a different game plan and immediately switching it up? I think it's, it speaks to that communication that Upset was just talking about. You know, the fact that in comms, they're exactly targeting what they need to do and where they need to attack on the map. I think part of it as well is us underestimating Ignar to a small degree. Yeah, like last yeah. time we saw him in Europe on Misfits, Thresh was one of his signature champions. Yes, he went to BBEQ Oliver's and didn't have a good performance there, but now we see him back at his best, hitting those hooks, just consistently applying pressure to that bot lane. And one of the names that we haven't grabbed, and I know, you know, unfortunately we can't can't highlight everyone, but I do want to give a shout out to Odo because yeah. while we have the champion select on our uh, a screen, I want to point people at Fnatic's composition. And the only three champions that you need to look at are Cassiopeia, Braum, and Sivir. So theoretically, between Braum and Cass, it's really hard to dive onto the back line. If you try to dive back there, you have the Cassiopeia ultimate, you've got the Braum uh, Q in the wall, and with the Sivir range on the W, Reckless should just be able to stand down there and throw out the damage. But because Odo was able to get incredible flanks, teleporting behind them, finding the vision, getting off to the side, it completely ripped apart any sort of composition that Fnatic could have made. Yeah, I'm overjoyed that uh, Cannon is back and that we get to see these types of flanks again, and they are absolutely detrimental for the team you are playing against. Now, also to Schalke's credit, yes, maybe they dropped the ball once when Nemesis, to be fair, had a great play in the jungle of Fnatic at one point, but Schalke never ceased to put the pedal to the metal. They kept going, they kept picking up kills, systematically pushing down the towers, closing out the game. I think part of that is on Odo is like with those flanking positions because it's quite easy after losing a team fight like that to consistently lose team fights like that. But Shaco were able to reset, get their vision control back around the Baron, and then get those flanks off. Beautiful victory, but that also means we need to talk about the other side of the coin and need to talk about Fnatic. They are now zero and four. And before this game, yes, it's always about the new member, Memesis, this and that, but he played fine, yeah. I think, in this game. But there are so many individuals individual errors from so many of these players. And I think that for me is the biggest thing that makes me scared of, you know, what's going to happen in the next couple of games if I were to be a Fnatic fan, because this is not, these guys have been to Worlds and back, you know? Why does this happen for us? I'm going to help you out. Like, kid gloves are off. And the one pass that I'm yeah. going to give is Whippo. I think it was a very rough early matchup, the fact that the Klepto procced. Uh, yes. Feel very well in favor for uh, for Odo. But ultimately, like you said, mechanical error after mechanical error, it's particularly from Fnatic's bot lane. And then it didn't clean itself up into team fights. No. I think they had maybe two good fights, but otherwise Fnatic were just fumbling across the board. There were plays in this highlight reel that I would flame my solo queue teammates for. This is diabolical bad from some of these players. Reckless there, stepping up into four players when he knows that they can just jump on him. That is just bad play. And for me, I, I just wish that I could listen to Fnatic's comms. Yeah. Like, as a, as a former coach, when I see something like that, I'm like, something is going What's wrong going on, yeah. in the communication because they're just not on the same page. And again, you saw it on Upset. He doesn't have insight into the comms. He says the same thing. You know, it looks like they're either tilted or they're out he of sync. He used the word desperate. Yeah. Desperate? Um... I get, understand what he's saying, like they're, they're trying to find a play and so they're then forcing bad plays, but some, at some point someone has to take responsibility and just step up and lead. You guys called out the draft before, you know, the draft of yesterday, for instance. What did you make of this one? Was, was it now that again? Or was it just really the players not seemingly on the same page at all? I personally think that this draft is actually fine for Fnatic, right? You have some scaling in the form of it. You got the Sivir there for late game as well. You only really have the flank opportunity from the cannon to shut you down if you get to team fights. They actually, got shut down early. I'm actually going to push back just a little bit because yeah. I see what you're saying. Like, you have comfort. Like, there's good things. You know, Reckless, he's on a Sivir. This is one of his signature champions. But you had a Cassiopeia priority pick. And the thing is, is while Nemesis did 
fine on the Cassiopeia in the mid lane. Where we've really seen Cassiopeia shine is her ability to be a flex pick and to be played in both mid and bot. If they choose the Sivir here, I mean, you, you can say that they were trying to sculpt the bot lane, you know, maybe dissuading the Ezreal because they have Braum Sivir, upset one of his best champions is the Ezreal. It's not great to pick into those two champions, but why not just play Cassio bot? Why can't they make use of this pick as a flex pick? And just to throw the thought out there, Reckless subbed himself out because he knew he couldn't play those flex picks in the bottom lane, and then they had the absolute luxury of having Buipo in the bottom lane and Soaz in the top lane. This is also all part of the new identity of Fnatic. I mean, it just blows my mind, this idea that you have such an established player like Reckless who's been playing for so long that would be handicapped so hard by a champion pool. And I like, I haven't studied Reckless's history in depth enough to like definitively say that's what's happening, but I feel like every single time our paths cross, I'm like, is this a champion pool issue? It feels really static, and I just have to keep going back to that. I don't think that's everything that went wrong here, no, so I don't no, want no, people no, no. to focus on that, but it definitely is a question mark for me. We're only going to focus on that. Yeah, yeah that, no. cut the clip, Reckless ship it. <laughs> we'll give him Jano again. No. It'll be fine. I mean, uh, I think, you know, we were ready to see how it was going to evolve, but at this 0-4, this, this is dire straits for Fnatic. We need to see a big change. We need to see it from next week on, or it's going to be even worse for them. I do want to pull it back in and focus on Schalke, who got this awesome victory, and we have the votes in for the player of the game. Kia player of the game is Ignar. Yes! 64% of the votes. Yes, Upset said, and I quote, yeah, I guess it should be Ignar, but it should go to the AD carry because support is not that important I was, in your face. I was so angry at Upset when he said that. As a support man, I'm like, Ignar Thanks, set you Twitter. up for every kill. Upset would be nothing without Ignar. Ignar could not miss a hook. I think he missed one. It was when Nemesis was walking in yeah. blind to the bush. I was like, oh, the one hook you're going to miss. But otherwise, Ignar was on point. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And as we finish this out, just some last thoughts. Last year, we saw Schalke finally coming into their own. They had a long history of trying in Europe. And last year, after a whole year of development, they made it to that final, and it was completely deserved and wonderful. And a lot of development uh, was had throughout that year. Right now, in this weekend, they've gone 2-0 now. They went 1-1 one -on -one last week. And the last two games for me have been absolutely sublime. Is the hype there for the Schalke hype train this year? I'm all aboard. I'm on it. I know that you were like, it's the hype there. Yeah, you ready to get the hype, the yeah, hype is yeah, there. Yeah, like, new yeah. backroom staff, new roster apart from upset. I think this Schalke team can be just as good, if not better, than the Schalke of last year. And again, what's really impressive is not just the mechanical ceiling. Like, that game, you go, you know, Ignar and uh, upset, Memento, they just styled on their opponents, mechanically speaking. But uh, from a macro standpoint, I still think the vision game is sublime from them. Yeah. I love the coordination of the support jungle. I think that there's a lot more strategic depth to Schalke than just their mechanical ceiling. Fantastic. What a scary. Schalke, no fear. Well, next up, Excel will face off with SK Gaming. And before that, Quickshot will also have a word with Fnatic coaches Young.